everybody. And guess what we're going to learn how to do? We're going to learn how to set up OBS when you first get it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people ask me questions. I've helped quite a few people get their OBS started. And they've taught me things along the way as well. So that's, that's what I'm doing this for. In case any of you guys, ladies out there, would like to start your own stream. Yeah. And OBS is free. So that's a good place to be. Anyway, okay, I'm a stickler on this. Very first thing that I would recommend is that you get OBS Studio. Don't get Streamlabs OBS for one specific reason. It eats up a lot of resources. That That's the big reason. It eats up a lot of resources. It takes, uh, it, it takes more RAM that OBS Studio doesn't take. You know, little things like that. And that's really it, you know, uh, aside from the fact that, you know, me and Streamlabs don't exactly have the best history. The real reason that I don't use uh, Streamlabs as OBS is because Streamlabs OBS just kills resources. That's it. Anyways, first thing you want to do, Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo or just random ass search engine. You want to go click on that and then type in. OBS Studio, not OBS Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio. Yeah, OBS Studio. You want to go to obsproject.com. Sorry, my big old head's in the way. I could probably get rid of that just a little bit. <laughs> Anyways, OBS Studio. Then you're going to go to the OBS Studio website. Click it, Rooney. And there you go. You got Windows, Windows. You got Mac, Mac, Linux, Linux. You click it, it automatically comes up with a download thingy. And that's what you want. You want OBS Studio. No reason to go with any of the other OBSs. I mean, you can go with Prism. That's what uh, Dr. Till uses, but I don't know anything about Prism. P-R-I-S-M, I think. Mm-hmm. So now that you downloaded your OBS, mm-hmm, and you got it installed, what you want to do is, you want to grab yourself a cigarette. All right. Anyways, uh, once you got your cigarette, if you smoke, then you're going to keep on watching my video, I hope. And watch this. It's about to be videoception. You're going to see my OBS. Oh, look at that good-looking guy over there. He's got the green hair and the yellow teeth. Epitome of sexy. Anyways, ah, so yeah, once you first download it, you're going to have nothing. All of the sources over here are going to be blank. All of your scenes are going to be empty. Everything's just going to be empty. I mean, like, we could do that kind of stuff later, you know? And we'll have this, like, blah, 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 blah thing going on behind me. But whatever. Maybe I'll make another video about that. This is just getting started, right? So you're going to go to settings right off the bat. Uh, OBS Studio is actually going to offer to give you their presets, which are okay. But most of them you're going to customize for your own uses. Settings. Ba, 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 ba. Now we got settings over there. And the settings are where it's at. So like general, you speak English, use English. Theme, that's just how this stuff looks. You know, like you, I got on Yammy, I guess. But you can you can do this. See that? Uh, you go white, which is blinding. That that's great. You go dark. Ooh, hey, I kind of like that. Uh, but you can go uh, uh, Christina Ricci. This is very uh, weird looking. So we're gonna go back to my default. Anyways, see see mine's like a little bit gray and a little bit blue. It's like a bluish gray. Anyways theme that's uh that's up to you uh -huh. updates update channel um this is just gonna be you know what i got set up i mean you don't have to do this i have mine automatically set so so like if i open obs and there's an update it'll just apply it that's why once in a blue moon you'll see me be like hey stream's gonna be a few minutes late i got an update because my dumb butt set it to where they choose when i get updates 
that's really all that is. Uh, oops. Output. I don't have anything clicked. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, source alignment. This is where you can make Windows snap, right? So, like, right now, if I hit cancel and I take my window here with my little clown body in it and I drag it, you'll see that that's what you get for hitting lock. Anyway, it doesn't snap into place, see? Like, if you had snap set up, it would just align the window for you. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. I might as well. It's going to be kind of a, a lengthy, a lengthy little guy anyway. So, okay. See that? I'm out. And it snaps in place. Instead of it being kind of loose and uh, wiggleable. There you go. So that's what uh, snap alignment is, but you don't technically need that. Uh, projectors, you see what I got set here. Nothing. Uh, string. <laughs> System tray. I don't really have anything set in particular. I think all this is usually stock stuff that OBS automatically sets up for you. Everything. Importers, I don't have that on. Studio mode, I, I didn't really do anything there either. Or multi-view. Nothing's really been changed. Did I take off the set snap sensitivity? I did. That's why I left that open. Okay. Uh, so I applied it. Uh, I took it back off. Anyway. Stream. This is like the most important page that you're going to see in OBS. Right there up at the top, you get the services. Services. I'm using YouTube. RTMPS. That's how you stream to YouTube, folks. Uh, Twitch. You know, you got, you got a bunch of services in here. Look at all these different ones. You get all of these different services that you can live stream to. Pretty great, right? Yeah, you're probably just going to stick with either YouTube or Twitch. <sighs> Rumble is, is different. I could just do a video on that if you guys want. Anyways, uh, server. Primary ing ingest server. That's what I use. It's probably the one you want to go with. Connect account. Now, this is for if you are just going to stream to one singular service all the time. You don't intend to change. You're just going to leave it on YouTube or you're just going to leave it on Twitch. That's what this is all about. That's what connect account does, you know, and then you just sign into whatever account. I personally do the stream key. Now, stream key is going to pop up when you, when you have, uh, <laughs> stream key is going to pop up when you have your YouTube stream all set up and ready to go. They're going to give you a stream key. You copy all of those little digits or little dots because that's what they show you. And then you put it in here. I would show you what the stream keys look like. But if I do, then somebody could copy that and paste that into their own OBS. And then they could stream to my channel without my permission. Oh, that's how it used to work. i pretty sure it still kind of possibly works like that. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. Anyway. So yeah, stick with me here. When it comes to the output, the audio encoder doesn't uh, do this for everybody. FFmpeg, I think that's just for USB mics. So if you've got like a mixer or a different microphone, like a headset microphone that you're using, I don't think audio encoder is going to come up at all. It didn't used to for me. And then I got this mic and now it does. Video encoder. This is where a lot of people forget to let you know that you should do, if you have, rather, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you want to switch the video encoder to NVIDIA NVENC. Yes, NVIDIA NVENC H.264. If it's set to the other one, usually that means that it's going to use your uh, either stock graphics card that came with your computer slash laptop or something else. I don't know. AMD probably. If you have an AMD, it's probably not going to say NVIDIA anything. But yes, switch the video encoder to whatever your current video card is, unless you don't know, or unless there's no other option. Then just go with what OBS has preset, which I think is like, uh, it's something. <laughs> it's not NVIDIA NVENC, it's just like H64 or something like that. So if you don't have an upgraded, an upgraded graphics card, just go right ahead with the NVIDIA NVENC if you do. And if you don't, then just go with what they give you. Because 
you'll click on the encoder and you'll only have one option. So if you if you have more than one option and one of them's in bank or one of them says AMD on it, then click that one. NVIDIA or AMD, whichever graphics cards in your system. Because that's the only time it'll come up with an option. All right. Rescale output. Don't worry about this one. Encoder settings. And remember, this is all just for streaming. So encoder settings, rate control. You want CBR. All these other ones have their uses, but use CBR. Eh. Bit rate. Now, this is where OBS itself is going to kind of uh, mess you up if you don't have a high-powered computer or something. Like, if your internet's not the top of the line and your computer doesn't have at least, like, 16 to 32 gigabytes of uh, of uh, RAM, then OBS's settings themselves are actually going to screw you over. Bitrate. That's what I'm talking about. Now, when you use OBS's presets, they're going to put you at, like, this number. They're going to put you at about 50,000. I don't know why. I don't know why. I know for a fact that they used to actually put you at 2,500, which is a great starting point for most computers. So if you're just starting on OBS, set this bit rate to 2,500 kilobytes per second. Set it there. I got mine on three. No particular reason, but that's what I keep mine on. And you're going to say, screw it. Either 2,500, 3K, you know, you can play around with it. You can raise it. You can lower it as you do different streams and as different people tell you what your streams look like, you know. Keyframe interval. Two seconds. Make sure that boy is on two seconds. Presets. I got mine on best quality. You don't necessarily need that. But it's to help limit stuff like artifacting, dithering, things like that. Okay, presets. I got mine on slowest slash best quality. I got an okay computer. It's not going to explode if I have it set to this. Yours won't either. None of this is going to kill your computer, I promise. So you could do all of these different options. I keep uh, high quality just so that I can have as as little bit of uh, missing pixels and like dithering and just pixelation and stuff. I keep it on high quality uh, or best quality rather. Tuning, I got mine on high quality. You can go with high quality, low latency, ultra low latency. Latency is the thing where it's the time in between when you say something and when people hear it on stream. So uh, if you want low latency, yeah, go with that, I guess, or it's ultra low latency. I got mine on high quality. It kind of stacks up just a little bit of milliseconds worth of stream and then sends it out you can set it for higher and lower and all that stuff in the different parts of the settings multi-pass mode right because tuning once you get what you got you got what you get multi-pass mode two passes full resolution i had mine on quarter resolution and then i realized how bad my shows looked so i put it on full resolution it's as simple as that you can also set it for single pass but i recommend that you uh, two pass full resolution for that one profile i got mine on high i probably should just have it on main but high is a good place to be. So uh, don't worry about baseline. Set it for either high or main. I like high. Look ahead. Make sure that box is checked, y'all. It does stuff. You can just highlight it and it tells you, see? I'm not going to read that because it's going to take too long. Uh, Psycho-visual tuning. Always keep that one checked. Yes, yes, yes. GPU. Make sure that's on zero. Leave it on zero. Leave it there. Max B-frames. Make sure it's on two. And there you go. Now you're all set to stream to an audience. You go find that audience. And then you tell them to come to my channel and, and like subscribe and stuff too. If you want to. You don't have to. But, you know, it's nice. Recording. Here's the uh, settings that I use for recording. Recording. Here's the settings that I use for recording. Recording settings. Here's my path. Now, path under the settings for recording here path is just going to be the folder that each one of your videos when you hit record it's going to be the folder that they get sent to mine's a little one i named obs records but what's neat about this is you can actually just set it up for whatever you want by hitting that browse tab 
So like you could set it to save to the desktop if you want, you know, you could set it to save to a folder called, you know, my secret adult videos or something, but it'll be all your OBS stuff. Uh -huh. And then recording format, I have mine on MPEG or MP4, you know, that that's what I got. Uh, you don't have to set it for that. Uh, video encoder encoder is always going to be NVIDIA and bank H.264 unless you don't have that as an option in your system. As I said, if you got AMD, set it for AMD. And if you got a stock video card, you won't have the option to change it to NVIDIA. So you don't have to worry about it. Audio encoder again. I believe that that is only for USB mics. I might be mistaken, but I think that's what it's for and only. Audio track, I only use one. Rescale output, uh, well, uh, I have it set to the size of my monitor. It's a little different for streaming. I think we're gonna get to there when we go to the video tab. Uh, custom muxer settings, I didn't set any, and uh, automatic file splitting, split by time. There you go. Audio stuff. You want to make sure that your audio bit rate, especially on the track that you use, like I only use track one, so I have it set for 160 bit rate. You want to make sure it's at least 160. Audio tab. This is this is getting fun. I like this stuff. So anyways, uh, sample rate under your audio tab under general, you want your sample rate to be at least 48 kilohertz. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's for your audio. So it sounds impactful and you can change lives and read books to people like I do all the time. That's a joke. That's a joke. Hanka Hanka. I'm a clown. Anyway, channels stereo. You don't want to go mono. I think we all know the difference between stereo and mono. Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Global audio settings devices. This is only red because, well, let's just say somebody messed up something so i'm gonna disable it that wasn't my fault honestly that was some kind of update that either windows or obs had and they recently reset all of my audio settings in obs for some silly reason that that's something you shouldn't have to worry about right off the bat like you know if you're not really setting up everything specific then you don't have to worry about the uh settings getting reset anyway Desktop audio too. I don't use. I don't use desktop audio. I don't use desktop audio too. Mike, this is going to be whatever microphone you have. So like, see these options? Default, uh, Windows microphone, or no, not Windows, Wavelink microphone. That's what I have. So that's why I have it set for that. And uh, it's gonna come up with whatever brand your microphone is. When you're doing this, it'll either come up with a brand or you'll have to use default if you have a built-in microphone. That's right. Not too, too hard to keep up with, huh? If a goofy clown guy can do it, you can do it too. We're going to go ahead and get down to uh, meters. Decay rate. I got mine on fast. You go fast, medium, or slow. That doesn't really matter. Um, here, I'll show you what the decay rate does. All right, when I speak, you see this little bar down here? That little bar that says mic slash AUX. And how when I get quiet, it goes empty. That's the decay rate. So, uh, yes, OBS is highly customizable. <laughs> so you could change it from fast to slow or medium. Peak sample, uh, peak, peak meter type, rather. I got mine on the sample peak. You can go with true peak, and it says more CPU uses or whatever. But let's see what that does. Now, you see that? You see how my uh, audio changed down there? and the bar changed or whatever. That That's like your true peak, I, I guess. I honestly don't know what the differences are. I just know it changes the look of the bar. <laughs> so call me a Riri if you want, but that's okay. Advanced, your monitoring device. You probably want this on default. I have fought that thing before thinking I was doing something right and I wasn't. I was doing it very wrong and it was capturing audio I didn't want it to. But yeah, you probably want that one on default. Uh-huh. And, you know, keep the disable Windows audio ducking on. Keep the low latency audio buffering mode off. Unless you need it for some reason. You might know more about this than I do. Hotkeys. These are, you know, user customization. So, like, you can hit shift and up, for example. And that brings up my little clowny spaceship. 
All right, we're going to the next tab. We're going to video. Video tab. This is where I was talking about earlier when I said that the scaling options will come into play later when we get down to the video tab. Base canvas resolution. This is going to be your monitor size. Your monitor size. It's what you're going to see. So mine is 1920 by 1080, but that's my monitor settings, right? And then I output to my stream viewers. That's what the output thing is. Obviously, I think that was self-explanatory, but whatever. Output, I got mine on 1280 by 720. That way, I'm not outputting full on HD that YouTube doesn't really process. See, that's a little secret. YouTube doesn't exactly give you 1080p when you're watching their service. So it's a waste of bandwidth. If you go all the way up like that, it's a waste of bandwidth. So people that have like 4K, they're wasting a whole bunch of bandwidth. But most of the people that do that actually have the bandwidth to waste. So you get me, right? You don't want to use up all your internet just trying to get a screen resolution, do you? Yeah, do you? Do you? Well, I don't. Mm-hmm. Downscale filter. Downscale filter is... uh pretty good you know it's pretty good i got mine on bicubic uh sharpened scaling 16 samples all the downscale output does is change what this looks like when you stretch things yeah restore me back to health here so anyway that's your uh downscale filter it's got different settings you can set it for like less samples more samples and like it, it makes it look different when you scale and, and uh, change sizes while you're live. Yep. Anyway, we're going to common FPS. I put mine on 30 frames per second. I think you can go all the way up to 60, but I wouldn't recommend it because when you're streaming, it's just going to eat up extra crap that you don't need to eat up. That's pretty much it. Yeah, pretty simple, straightforward. Hotkeys, again, user customization. As you can see, I've got something set to control two. That's to switch scenes. Uh, and you just type that on your keyboard and it switches to that scene in my OBS, but it won't do that in yours because you have to set it yourself. And you don't have to use control T. You can use like two numbers or two letters or something too. Here, I'll clear it and I'll show you. Always, when you want to clear these little boxes, hit this X, not the trash can. I, I literally just did that. So hotkeys are all user customization stuff. So like, if you want to make one of your scenes to where you can switch it by hitting, for example, shift two. There you go. Look at that. I just set that up. So I can switch to uh, my studio scene by hitting shift and two. And I'm going to dump that because I believe that I actually already had it set for control two. So you click in there. You hit your control button and, and the number two. And look at that. It's done. You ain't got to worry about that. I just did it. Control two. So yeah. And you can do that with every single thing you have installed in your OBS. Which, again, if you guys want me to go on to details about that kind of thing, you know, let me know. Comment on the video and be like, hey, Trippy, show me how to set up a scene. And I will do that. Accessibility. This is just so you can change colors of stuff. Change colors of the border of your, you know, your OBS, yada, yada, yada. Not very important. Advanced tab. Ooh, advanced. We're getting advanced in this bitch. It's not that advanced, to be honest. It's just... Just not that advanced. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. General. Process priority. I got mine on high. You can go normal, normal or high. They're all good. You don't have to worry about that. That's just like a task manager, you know? Remember when you would go into your task manager and you would be like, I want the priority for my web browser to be set to high because it was getting slow or whatever back in the day? Yeah, that's what you want to do. Um, rather, it, it's the same thing. You don't have to really worry about it too much. Normal should be fine. I believe that's what OBS presets it to. And there you go. Show active outputs warning on exit. There you go. That's another thing you should keep on. Uh, video. Renderer. Direct 3D 11. That's what I got. That's the current gen stuff. Uh, color format. NV12. 
color space, rec.709, color range full, SDR white level, 300 nits, and uh, HDR nor, uh, nominal peak level, 1000 nits. I haven't changed any of that. I can tell you that much. So you should probably be okay just leaving all that the same. Recording, we kind of went over this a little bit. File formatting, that's your stuff. You don't have to change that <laughs> if you're going to be recording with OBS. It should be okay here. Match me and you should be good. I'm actually recording this with OBS, obviously, because you can see the button in the top right. Uh, replay buffer. Replay suffix. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, you see how mine looks. If you ever come up with a fix for anything that I've got going wrong, let me know. We're going to go down to stream delay. And as you can see, I don't have it enabled. But stream delay can help out if you got a slower computer or semi poor internet because it will put a little buffer in between you and your audience. So when you say something, you can have like a 20 second delay. You can you can do like a minute, I think, or more. You don't really uh, always need it. So like when you're first starting off, you might want to play with it. If you're having issues streaming, there'll be a little like square at the very bottom of your OBS. And usually it'll be green and it'll tell you your kilobytes right next to that. And if it keeps dropping down to zero or if it keeps dropping drastically from 2,500 to like a thousand or something, you might want to introduce a little bit of a stream delay to help it gather up information that it's going to send out. So that's what that's all about. Sounds complicated, but still really isn't automatically reconnect. Now, this is a big thing that you should keep on for sure automatically reconnect in the event that you lose connection from your OBS to whatever site you're streaming to the automatic reconnect will take a, a hold and will reconnect if you've lost your connection I've got mine set for two seconds you can go lower you can go higher doesn't really matter too much as long as you have it on uh, maximum retries so like okay if you're streaming and your power goes out and it's out until morning the maximum retries will just stop retrying after it hits the number that you have set here again pretty dang easy but definitely put it on because uh it may not already be checked when you first get obs network you don't have to worry too much about this stuff i'm wired i have an ethernet plug in the back of my computer going to my modem and that's usually what you want if you're on Wi-Fi, I can't help you. I've never used Wi-Fi to stream. But yeah, you can bind it to your own home IP if you want. You don't have to. Sources. We're going down to sources here. Turn off hardware acceleration. It will help you dramatically on stream. You'll be able to show all sorts of stuff. Uh, sometimes the hardware acceleration interferes with certain websites and will give OBS a black screen. So yeah, that was easy to take care of. I think it helps also with VLC media player. So if you're going to use that, have off hardware acceleration under the advanced tab in OBS. And then hotkeys again, that's user stuff. So you can play with hotkeys and things on your own and, uh, you know, have fun with it. One thing I'll tell you is that nothing you do in OBS is going to brick your computer. It's not going to break. Everything can be set back. Uh, you can undo everything, you can default everything, what have you. I hope it's a short-ish video and it's not like an hour long or anything like that. But uh, I hope you guys get some use out of it and some enjoyment at the same time. And don't forget, Hanka Hanka. Also, I stream every Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Saturdays and Sundays are 6 p.m. Wednesday and Thursday is 7 p.m. All of it's Eastern Standard Time. So, you know, if you keep forgetting that I exist... Stop it already. Stop it. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys have a good time. Uh, rest of the day, night, whatever you have going on outside, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you on stream sometime. Later, everybody.